Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today just for a bit of fun we are going to run through the startup of the Just Flight Hawk T1 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I recently put up a preview video just before this airplane launched it is now out and in that video I edited down the startup sequence because it's it's got quite a few bit, little button presses that you need to get right to make it work properly from cold and dark and I said if you'd like to see uh, a full video do let me know and uh, a few of you would definitely like to see it so we're going to run through it today. There's a few little gotchas in the startup sequence that mean it's easy to actually get it wrong. Just Flight provide a very good explanation in their manual but I know some people prefer videos for this sort of thing so that's what we're going to do today and we'll get it started up here at Duxford and then maybe we'll go and do a little bit of flying around uh, a little bit of an air show. As you can see I'm using the freeware, excellent freeware Duxford scenery on flightsim.to. I'll leave the uh, link for that in the description and I've got the air show sort of add-on for that. And we are using this really lovely uh, Hawk livery included with the Just Flight Hawk. So what we're going to do is start, uh, I've simply loaded up the airplane onto the stand uh, in cold and dark, which it does by default in Microsoft Flight Simulator when you load onto a stand. And I'll show you how we're going to get it powered up from this, this state using the uh, inbuilt checklists. I don't know everything. I'm not a Hawk pilot. I never have been. So there are some things that I'm not familiar with, but hopefully this will just get it to the point where you can uh, run through the startup as well. Right, let's get started. So this is us in the cockpit. For those of you who've seen my preview video will know that I think this is one of uh, my favorite add-ons ever. Uh, and it's also one of the, obviously the best in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's really very, very good. And it's obviously going to fit into a certain market if you want a little fast, sporty sort of aircraft. And it does that very well. It's absolutely superb. So it's loaded up. You can see it's set up in the sort of the, the air show config here. So we haven't got a HUD or a GPS. We can change this in the menu. And we've got a little weapons panel here that we're not actually going to use. So it's, it's disabled in this config. This is effectively the Red Arrows config where you have the smoke because this is going to be a bit of an air show. Um, today the iPad is off because we've just loaded up cold and dark so what we're going to do is power up with the checklist so this is the airplane completely as it should be and then you can go into the inbuilt checklists and start with the initial checks start with the front cockpit and it's pretty obvious stuff so we're going to have the landing gear lever down which is um, pretty hard to see uh, selector is called because it's these buttons here um, but you can see that if I move my gear lever um, switch then I've got up and down so the down should be pressed in to say that it gets down battery switches should be off they're back here battery one and two are both off so this is pretty normal airplane it's just a few extra things MCP coolant should be off um, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what that one is um, if there's anything I don't know it won't affect us in being able to start up the airplane so we'll skip that one weapons control panel all off or well, we don't have that we have this I believe that's what yeah weapons control panel that's what it is MCP if I click on it I'm suspecting that's going to be uh, something to do with the weapons. Mass lock safe, something similar. ISIS sights off. Uh, stick top safe, um, which is close the safety cover on the control stick. So that, again, should be closed already, but we're not using weapons today. Auction selector on, which is down here. We flick that to on, and uh, there you go. And then up here, we will eventually, uh, we can see that it's got uh, contents. So we've turned it on down here. To flick it to the on and then we check contents up here on the right for the oxygen gauge then well take that we need to move to the rear cockpit and this has to happen you can't skip the rear cockpit even if you're flying this single pilot from the front so go to your camera from the toolbar then go to pilot and there is a co-pilot and that jumps you into the back seat so all we need to do back here is a couple of things but they, they do have to happen for this to work there's a few extra ones on here so we'll run through them all engine start switch goes on which is this switch here we click it to on not start just the middle position on then we go to tailplane standby trim cover down so that's the cover open we want it down anti-skid switch on which is back here on standby uhf switch to main so the uhf switch for that is down here and it should be left in main <laughs> you can see i struggle to find some of these things landing gears gear selector should be down back here as well so we'll press that and then it should be pushed in for transfer to the front so we press red there to push it in flap selector should be set to pupil which is the middle position so it should be there by default weapons management panel override switch well we're not using that oh uh, so leave that stick top should be safe back here as well and lighting switches off those are over here those are all off and finally auction selector needs to go on so that's on and now that's us done. So the main things we did back here, we put the engine start switch in the middle, we put the anti-skid on, 
and uh, made sure that the landing gear and flaps were transferred to the front. And that's going to be the, uh, the the big ones, but also auction. Right, let's jump back into the forward cockpit. That is the initial checks complete. So strapping in checks. This is, you know, we're, we're all ready to go. Um, and we're going to sit down with the intention of going flying. So back into the front seat. Rudder pedals lock off. That's this red bar here. We push that down and away. And now the rudder pedals can be moved. But before that, they were restricted. Then battery switches can finally come on. Now, when you turn these on, what you want to do is look at your voltage over here. So battery volts, it's, it's just off at the bottom. We turn on battery one, making sure we have a decent voltage there. It's just in the green. And we'll turn on battery two, also decent voltage. So I'm going to turn both the battery switches on. Again, this is not necessarily accurate. This is just what I've interpreted from the checklist. And I know some people prefer videos. You're going to get that warning sound now because the caution warning sort of systems come to life. So you can press these red... Um, buttons up here these these are the, like the alert grabbers press that and it, it cancels that warning because otherwise it will keep going navigation lights are down here it's a really nice layout this cockpit I, I am a big fan of it actually really easy to find your way around the light panel is just down here so we'll tick that and that outside will mean that the airplane looks like it's powered up and we got the as you can see there the little red nav light showing so that's all good jumping back in ccs amplifier switches to norm i think it's down here on this panel um, and then it should be set to norm and then there's a fail option as well. I think that's what this is. Parking brake on. Now, I've got my parking brake assigned, but you'll see the parking brake's down here. So off, it disappears. On, it should appear. So you can click on that as well, but I've got it assigned to my Thrustmaster TCA parking brake. So that's on. Chocks removed. So now your iPad will come to life and we can click on the chocks and they'll be gone. Flags and covers, we'll click on that and they'll be gone as well. And steps removed. So just those three all in a row. Now the airplane's starting to look a bit more prepared. We've got pilots sitting there, got the nav lights on, and got rid of all the bits around the airplane. Unfortunately, these uh, <laughs> spectators really do want to get the full experience, and they'll get roasted by that engine when it turns on, so hopefully they will move before then. Right, that's it. So next, internal checks. And this is where we run through quite a few things. So we start with the left console, and here's the really important one, and it's easy to miss, and I've done this before. You see it says LP cock. This is the low pressure fuel cock. So this is actually this lever here, and if you leave it pulled up, then it will not supply fuel to the engine. You won't be able to start, and I've done this. I've sat here wondering why it won't start. So get rid of that, push it in, and now it's on. Really important. If you load up cold and dark, it will be off. Engine start switch. So now we're down on this panel. This is obviously the left console. This goes to on position, not start just yet. Fuel pump switch goes on, which is this little one down here. So we tick that. Peter heat stays off because we're not moving. It would just get too hot and there's no point having it on. Tail by, tailplane standby trim is this one. Same as in the back seat. Make sure it's down. Uh, you'll notice that when you lift it up, you can select the alternate. But if you have it closed, it will automatically be in the um, main system. Lift for standby, close for main. So you lift it up and then you would be able to use the standby trimmer. And that's my understanding of it anyway. But we're going to leave that there. And hopefully that hasn't moved. Nope. That's our tailplane trim indicator sitting about zero. So anyway, that's closed, which is good. Ignition switch to normal. That is up here. Forward is normal. So we'll tick that. Throttle HP off. So you'll notice if I click this, we're in uh, the throttle moves. But if I click it again, it's sort of locked out. And this is the off position. Quite common in sort of fighter style aircraft. So that's done. Anti-skid switch stays off. We leave that off until we're ready for takeoff pretty much. So we'll tick that. Standby UHF goes to main. That's in the middle at main as it should be automatically. Brake gauges check pressure. That is these two. You've got port and starboard, left and right, brake pressure. Just like the Airbus has that little gauge, which I've talked about in my hydraulics video. Um, this one is sitting here. And uh, yeah, they're both at zero. So that's not, uh, not great, actually. So they, they should be a bit higher than that. But what I've done is by running that parking brake over and over, I've totally... Um, remove the brake pressure. So what I might do just for me is I'll put the chocks back in because I haven't got a parking brake at the moment until the engine starts up. There might be a way to, to run the hydraulics electrically, I don't know. But yeah, so yours, if you haven't run the parking brake like me over and over again, yours should be sitting there with some pressure in them. But I've drained the uh, accumulator, which was over here. So no <laughs> for that one. Next, we go to the left main instrument panel, which is here. Um, so this is on the, the forward panel. Uh, so. Uh, undercarriage standby handle not pulled that is this one here that's not pulled flap standby handle here not pulled no it is not landing gear indicator now we get three greens they don't work until you have power to the aircraft so you can see our voltage is running we're sitting entirely on batteries though so you don't want to spend too long like this but indeed three greens looking good so we'll tick that voltmeter 23 volts or greater 
we're just about there we don't want to wait too much longer but indeed we have 23 volts which is good for starting up the gas turbine starter flap selector up so it is in the mid position there yep so that is still up flap indicator confirm up just this tiny little gauge for the indicator but it is indeed at zero so that is confirming up now we're onto the uhf radio which stands for ultra high frequency we don't use this in civilian aviation but military do uh, we want to turn this on so i'm going to put that to i think i'm going to put it to both i'm not very familiar with uhf radios weapon selector switch off well we don't have this we don't have this the panel it would be here if you do have the panel you might have a different config for example uh, not T1, which is sort of the training config. There is the actual air-to-air -air config. And then you see this. So you'd have weapon selector off, pylon select switches uh, off. So this is something I'm going to look at in the future. But for now, I'm not going to be using it. Um, but yeah, you can imagine you want things off. But we're going to stick with the red arrows. And I'm going to get rid of the GPS. So let's have that off. There we go. Great. So UHF is on. And we don't have weapons sitting there. So I'll just tick through those. Good stuff. Let's clear out that menu and we'll go down to the center and uh, lower instrument panel. So this now obviously is looking at this panel here, the main the main instrument panel. DGI flag retracted, that's this instrument down here. And uh, yeah, there's no warning flag. We have power to the aircraft, it is working. Turn and slip indicator the same, that's this indicator here. Just like on the Airbus, you've got a ball and a turn indicator. So the ball is the slip and this needle is the turn Tick on those accelerometer to reset just push that button there and you'll see that needle has returned to zero uh, sorry to 1g and then it will work in flight it works very well they've done a great job with it main attitude indicator does have the flag the flag is showing because it's not powered yet hsi beneath it the horizontal situation indicator also has the flag this yellow and uh, black stripe ahars control unit to slave so we want to have this hsi running um, automatically and aligning itself so we are going to use Slave, so I'd move this from off to DG to slave. ISIS control unit off. I did just check, and indeed the ISIS is the site, but we don't have it fitted today, so that is off. Next is ILS marker light test. So the marker on an ILS is the, the beacons that come on as you fly down the ILS to warn you you're getting closer, and that's this little light here. You can see it is labeled, but it's quite small, so you press that and that light turns on, which checks. So this says UHF power switch off. If you look in the Just Flight manual, it actually says that at this point, after the ILS marker light, the UHF power switch should be normal. So I think that's actually slightly incorrect because we, we turned it off on earlier. Um, we've got a UHF running. I don't want to turn it off just now. So I think that should say uh, normal at this point. And then we move on to main altimeter. Now, I could be wrong, but there's definitely a discrepancy between the two. Uh, so main altimeter is here. Flag showing. We've got the orange line. So that's good. Standby attitude indicator flag retracted. So this is already working on batteries alone, which is what you would hope, because these are the systems that are going to work for us when everything else, if the engine fails, basically. Hence, we have some sort of um, artificial horizon working, which is good news. Standby instrument switch to normal. Standby instrument switch to normal is this switch up here which is on or set to normal sorry and that's us done in the middle next is the right instrument panel oxygen caption should be out we've got the oxygen contents over half we've actually got full oxygen confirmed flow we have flow on a little indicator and uh, by the way the oxygen caption lights down there i think that's what it's referring to fuel gauge check contents now it loads you up with not too much what's that five six seven eight nine ten so about 650 kilograms now somebody commented um on my last video who was a red arrow engineer and they said they, they wouldn't be taking off with that much for a display certainly so i'm going to top it up to a ton so there we go we now have a ton of fuel so that's looking better so it does load up with not too much fuel and i've actually while filming videos with this almost run out before so you do have to keep an eye on that it doesn't hold a whole lot of fuel this airplane it's not designed for long sort of missions rotation indicator confirm black that is talking about this little indicator here which is talking about rotation of the engine so that's um, black gts gas turbine starter is also black that's not running so we'd expect it to be caution warning panel cwp is this panel down here this is very common name it's the same on, on lots of aircraft caution warning panel and this is where any systems that are upset are showing so you can see our ac systems are upset our generators offline our hydraulic systems are upset i'm going to open up this and test it we get the warning and we get all those lights looking good but these remember will keep going so just press them to get rid of them again then remember to close the test switch so they all worked tick lighting switches as required so you can adjust these rotary knobs to adjust the lights but it won't work until you click panel on and there we go now they're lit up great news so lighting as required lighting dimmers as required so panel lights is here and these are the dimmers 
Finally then, right console, we're nearly there, nearly ready to start up. CCS PTT, this is the CCS panel down here. And the push to talk switch needs to be set to norm, which it is indeed. VHF on, VHF is the very high frequency radio, and that's what we use normally in aviation for civilians. So this is currently set to off, we turn it to TR and G. Then it's going to look like a normal radio, as you'd expect. IFR SS, sorry, IFF SSR, Secondary Surveillance Radar, I believe that stands for I, your transponder, needs to go to standby. So that is over here. That's this switch here. And I'm going to put that to standby. And it's going to turn on in a second, run its test, and hopefully we'll see it look like a normal transponder. There you go, as we're used to. TACAN is a, instead of VORs on this sort of aircraft, so you've got a TACAN receiver, you put it to transmit and receive very normal or whatever you want but that's what i'm going to use today tacans are limited in microsoft flight simulator they don't work fully yet they uh, they aren't quite as good as they should be so for now i, I wouldn't really bother with that but uh, here's the ils box now this one on as required so it's currently off you set it to ils or vor and then tune the frequency you'll notice it is missing a number so you do have to actually skip a number out it's a bit confusing at first but don't forget to select ils or vor or it won't work i've made that mistake many times <laughs> Final, final panel then, very simple, cabin conditioning, normal, set that to normal, and then cab, uh, cabin air temp to auto. And you actually hear the fans come to life in the background. Hopefully you can hear that. Next is close the canopy. So we're now in a pretty much ready to go airplane. Still sitting on batteries though, so again we are slowly draining those batteries down. But we're powered up, still got those chocks in because I still don't have any pressure in the brakes but you hopefully will canopy close you can just click on the handle and remember to lock it that's closed and locked great now we're on to engine start so pre-start very simple engine start switch is on they were on in the back because we put it there and this one is now on anti-collision lights red so go over to your lighting panel and you'll see this little guide it's a bit confusing but the switch is only moving uh, one axis, they go up and down. So in the middle, they're off. When they're down, they're both red, as you can see there. And then when they're up, they're both white. So we want them down for red at the moment. You don't want white until you're out on the runway. And if you look outside, you can see there's the red beacon on top. And this tells people around the aircraft we're about to start. Sadly, those uh, viewers aren't paying attention to that, but there we go. So we are now red, so that tells people around we're starting. Great, it's time to start up the engine. I absolutely love doing this in this airplane. Really nice start sequence that they've modeled. Really great sound effects. Relight button, press and release. That is this button here on the front of the throttle. This is actually used for auto relighting in flight and all sorts of things, but we press that and you can hear the electronics spool up. Sorry, the GTS start to spool up. That's that little mini sort of APU that we'll then use to power the startup of the main engine. It takes about 20 seconds to start up. And the only indication we get is this little light here. There you go. That's gone green. Oh, sorry, it's not even a light little marker. That's green telling me the gas turbine starter system is up and running. And if we jump outside, you can hear it and see the exhaust. It exhausts from just in front of the rat door. Exhausts from this little port here. So again, I love having that modeled. Really, really nice little detail that. Um, yeah, good fun. Very good fun. Right, so that's running. Tick, GTS indicator green, tick, engine start switch. So now we go to the start switch and we push forward to start. It rocks back, but pretty quickly you'll see rotation go green. So we've done that. Rotation indicator has gone green, so it's turning the main engine. And now wait for the RPM to get to 15 to 20%. That's shown here. So there's 10. And this little needle shows you the, the, the single digits. So 10, and that's 17. 18, 19, so anyway, it's it's enough. So I click on this little lever and it provides fuel. Tick, throttle, is it idle? It is indeed, as it should be. Um, and now the engine's gonna spool up. So that's all good. So during start, we're gonna see the GTS indicator go black. That's because it's gonna turn off, it's no longer required. GTS indicator's gone black. Rotation indicator's also gone black. Fire caption is out. We don't have a fire warning. RPM needs to settle at 50% or greater. So that is 50. And then if I look up here, 5. That's 55%, just over 55%. So that's tick. Caution warning panel should say oil. Um, sorry, oil, FPR, and trans caption should be off. 
so they are those are to do with the engines and if we didn't have oil pressure for example or fuel then we could have a problem with the engine flight controls now free and correct so you'll notice earlier you couldn't move the um, stick which is why I moved the camera around here to put this switch to slave that's because it's locked in position until you get hydraulic power so there we go that is now free and correct and I'll do the rudder as well working nicely hydraulic to reset so let's look at our hydraulic panel you'll see now that we started the engine that the pressure has returned to the parking brake which is great at the moment we're only using system one system one is pressurized system two is not what I'm going to do is get rid of those chocks now because we have pressure in our brakes uh, you'll notice the accumulator supply is that's that's all pressured now as well so that's looking much more healthy and the system two is at zero now you are if you do a flight control check you'll see a slight drop in the pressure on system one but I'm going to press the reset button and now that'll power hydraulic system two that will get rid of the caution light down here as well hydraulic two should go out as soon as that or once it has pressure tick CWP gen and AC captions off yet yeah, all the electrics are working and then CWP remember that's our caution warning panel all off except skid so skid is on because we have it turned off down here we're not going to use that until we're getting out to the runway so I can tick that and that is almost it really that's the engine startup you're in a serviceable airplane and the next thing to do is run our checklist to power up and head out So I dare say this next little sequence won't surprise uh, any of you used to flight simulators. Trims set to neutral. So tail trim is up here. This is obviously the most important one, our pitch trim. So just make sure that needle is set to neutral. I've obviously got my trimmer switch assigned to my joystick. So that's set to zero, which is down there. The other two trimmers are down here. So you've got rudder trim switch, needle should be in the middle, and aileron trimmers. So they should be in the middle as well. So that's tick. Air brake test. So to test this, the air brake outside, I'm going to show you now, doesn't work on the ground. And the reason is, oh, let me get to a better view for you. The reason is, as I'm trying to deploy it here using my control, uh, with the gear down, there's a risk of a tail strike on landing. So it automatically retracts. So what we do is we put the switch to the test position. I think you'd have to hold it there in real life, but in the sim it works. Put it to test. And then, actually, let's stay in the cockpit. And then I'm going to deploy it using my switch. And you'll see air brake light goes white up here because it's deployed. And then we can see it outside. So you have to hold the test switch forward. But in the simulator, it seems to work just fine. And there it is. As far as I can tell, it's a single position. I don't think you can adjust it. I think it's either on or off. But there we go. That is tested. So we'll tick that. And make sure you put it back to off the test switch so that it stays uh, retracted. You don't want to accidentally deploy it while taking off or landing. Peter heat switch can come on. Flap selector to mid, so we'll put that down. That's this little switch here. There we go, mid for takeoff. There's just as up, mid, and down. It's very simple flaps. Hydraulic gauges check pressure. So we've got accumulated pressure, brake pressure, system one and two pressure, all looking good. Test and set altimeters. Test, set QFE. So they say set QFE. QFE is a different pressure sensor setting. Um, we're on um, Q and H normally in civilian world. QFE would mean that the altimeter reads zero sitting at the airport so you'd use it where i want to fly a thousand foot circuit so i'll set qfe and then i'll be a thousand feet above the runway threshold that's what qfe is used for it's slightly different whereas in um civilian aviation we'd set q and h which is here and you can see that we're actually about 100 feet above sea level so i would still stick with q and h just because it's what i'm used to but you might choose to do otherwise warning flags all clear yeah all good we haven't got any flags up here. Glide slope and nav aren't working because we haven't tuned anything. That's fine. Astrid indicators are erect, which are these two here. Compass is sync. So we've set it to sync um, and slave. And then it says push to sync. Let's try that one out. There we go. The key thing is it's pointing the same way. We're at 152 degrees, 152 degrees. And if we compare it to our genuine whiskey compass up here, 152 degrees. So that's all ticked. DJI set is required. I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, but you could adjust it if you needed to. Tick. And nav instrument set required. We're just going to do a display here. ISIS is that HUD system that we're not using. So I'll tick that. Right, next is to taxi. So it's all clear around. We've got permission from airshow control to go out and uh, run our routine. So I'm releasing the parking brake, which remember was down here. That is released. Doesn't move on idle, especially with about a ton of fuel on board. I found that it does need a bit of throttle. So those again, those viewers behind should really get a move. Move on. Uh, that's clear. Parking brake release. Brakes are test uh, on moving off. So I'm going to just just dabble them. They do work. 
that's good. So the plane is moving. Tick. Flight entrance and avionics check for correct indication. So this is again very common in aviation. What I'm going to do is move forward. And then when I turn to the right, I'm going to make sure that my horizontal situation indicator and the DG both turn to the right, which they do. That looks good. The artificial horizon stay level. The ball turns to the left and the turn indicator goes to the right. So that all makes sense for a, uh, a turn to the right on the ground. And then you would try and check it the other way if you could. So everything seems sensible. Airspeed indicator is not going to read anything at this sort of uh, speed. Oh, we are going to have a run in with a truck. Next one is before takeoff. So trim set to neutral they are pitot heat switch on it is remember that was that little switch down here anti-skid switch can go on which is just this one which we move forward i'm just going to go around this uh, track fuel gauge check contents we do indeed have a ton of fuel flap selector mid it is in mid and it's indicating in mid landing light on so that is this little switch down here which flick up and it says land taxi that is that beautiful nose light on the front of the hawk which is always good fun it's so iconic and such a great part of the aircraft to see so that is now on and the collision lights go to white as we're about to enter the runway so we'll flick these up and now the beacon on top and below the aircraft will be flashing so sort of that anti-collision you can just about see it there that white strobe more visible bright enough to be seen in daylight red ones wouldn't be visible from a long way away tick caution warning panel all off all lights are out takeoff brief complete next is the entering the runway checks now something I haven't done, I think I must have missed it, uh, flight control check. We did do a full and free, um, but let's just run that again. There's no indications that I found, but you can actually see the trim. So the tail plane, if I move, if I pull up and down on the elevator, it does show its position. So you can get a sense of that. I don't think the aileron, aileron one does. No, there we go. And rudder is working. Now I understand the real aircraft doesn't use any nose wheel steering. Hence there's no nose wheel steering button or option or anything like that. But it seems to have been added into this model to make it easier to use on the ground. That's my understanding of it. I could be totally wrong. But uh, yeah, so at low speed, I can turn using my rudder pedal and it's, it's very precise, very easy to taxi on the ground. My understanding would be in the real aircraft, you would use differential braking and uh, rudder and so on. A bit more complicated, totally possible, but it means it has a, a castering nose wheel. Um, which, so you just literally use one brake pedal at a time to bring it around the corners. Great, so air show control have cleared us for takeoff for our routine. It's clear out on the approach. There's no one else doing a show or anything like that. The crowd are waiting over there. So let's line up and run through the final checks, the runway checks. IFF, SSR, so our secondary surveillance is as required. Lights, I'm going to leave as they are. We've got the anti collisions on white, the nav lights on, and the landing light on the front. Definitely want that for the viewers. Then we've got altimeters as required. They're set to Q and H, which I think I'm going to use. Mass as required, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Um, WCP which would be the weapons control panel we're not using RPM max 104 so this is now talking about the takeoff so in the Hawk as far as I'm aware we can go full throttle we just stick the throttle right up to max the limit is 104% with 665 degrees Celsius so we're going to spool up hold it on the brakes and I'll get it to full power before we get going during the takeoff, we're going to accelerate to about 90 knots you'll notice as soon as you've got a bit of speed going over the ground the uh, you can find that the rudder is all that's effective. The nose wheel steering stops working, which is accurate to the real aeroplane. It actually gives you better control than uh, doing it any other way in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We all know about the uh, the overly grippy ground uh, friction in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Try not to oversteer too much. Right, so there we go. We're on the runway, ready to go. So I'm going to turn on the smoke control myself because I want to use that pretty shortly after takeoff. And then we're going to spool up the throttle, so put it all the way forward. Holding on the brakes, the brakes are holding, and now we need 104% max. So I've got 100%, and then remember the little gauge 101, 102, 103, and basically it shouldn't go over 104, which it isn't. RPM max 665. Uh, so that's not actually RPM, that's the TGT, but it, you can see it's just below 600, so that's fine. Brakes are holding. So next one is after takeoff. Let's get rid of that checklist. It's time to go and do our routine. So let's get going then. Brakes released. Straight away, I noticed that the um, nose wheel steering is not working, which is good. 
as soon as we reach 90 knots which is there very quickly i'm going to raise the nose wheel just slightly off the runway and then hold it there and then i get to 120 knots there and i can rotate the airplane off the ground we need to raise the gear and flaps before 200 knots so gear coming up positive climb accelerates very quickly there's 170 knots flaps coming up now and what we're going to do is we're just going to head out slightly this way to a thousand feet turn back around and begin our routine final checklist i suppose we could do for this video after takeoff checklist no surprise landing gear up flap selector up and you can see the indication is up down there caution warning panel all off tick right straight through a thousand feet power back trim those down let's go